60 channel presents race in america has always been a contentious issue from the country's shameful history of slavery to the ongoing debate over immigration unlike many other major issues it's a subject that frequently appears in movies and films from inspiring stories about legendary leaders to heartbreaking documentaries about civil rights. Movies can help all families start or continue important conversations about race. Movies can help to emphasize important messages such as the value of diversity and acceptance. They can also be used to discuss how various racial groups are portrayed in movies. Hollywood is known as a liberal bastion of political correctness. However, as these heinous films demonstrate, this was not always the case. Some of them are downright fetishistic when it comes to racism. Others are fantastic films with stereotypical characters that have been degraded. So in this video today in Trixie channel, we are about to show you and introduce you three of the most racist movies of all time. If you doubt, don't. Just click on the subscribe button and be a family member of our big family, Trixie channel. And also don't forget to hit that bell button over there so whenever we post a new video, you'll be the first one to know. Let's start with the first movie of our list, the most racist movies of all time. Number 1. Gone with the Wind, 1939 Gone with the Wind was a 1939 American epic film that became one of the most well-known and successful films of all time. It was the all-time box office champion for more than 30 years, and it won 8 Academy Awards in addition to two honorary awards. The film is almost four hours long and includes an intermission. And it is based on Margaret Mitchell's best-selling 1936 novel, Gone with the Wind. The film's production was a shamble because Selznick was determined to cast Gable in the role of Rat. The start of filming was postponed for two years until January 1939. A scarlet role was difficult to fill, and 1,400 unknown women were screened for the part. Several writers rewrote Sidney Howard's original screenplay in order to trim it down to a manageable length. Shortly after filming began, the original director, George Cukor, was fired and replaced by Fleming, who was briefly replaced by Sam Wood while taking a break due to exhaustion. Just a month before the film's release, post-production wrapped up in November 1939. Gone with the Wind glorifies Confederate soldiers by portraying the war from their point of view, implying that the Union brutalized their simple, peaceful existence. Scarlett O'Hara, the main character, loses her husband to the war, despite the fact that she doesn't care. Her home is destroyed by evil Union soldiers, and she is later attacked by Yankee carpetbaggers, all of the sake of the poor South's wish 
to own slaves. Now we go to our second movie of the list, the most racist movies of all time. You don't mess with the Zoan, 2008. Is it surprising to find an Adam Sandler film on a list of racist films? I don't think so. Tired of the fighting in his country, the generally Israeli commander Zoan, means Adam Sandler, who we know, fakes his own death and travels to New York to pursue his lifelong ambition of becoming a hairstylist. Zoan's seductive cut and curl make him a hit with Manhattan's ladies. But when enemy Arabs spot him, he'll have to rely on his military skills if he ever wants to use scissors again. This is yet another film that tries to be funny while not offending, but feels miserably. Sandler portrays Zoan, an Israeli soldier who secretly wishes to work as a hairdresser in America. Rob Schneider, Salander's constant psychic in every film, appears as a Palestinian taxi driver. The film, like most Sandler comedies, received poor reviews but was a box office success. Now we go to our third movie in the list of the most racist movies of all time. Fantasia, 1940. Fantasia is a Disney animated feature-length concert film. This is an experimental film that combines eight magnificent classical musical compositions with enchanting, exhilarating, and imaginatively choreographed animation. Prehistoric times, the four season nature, hell slash heaven, the themes of light with darkness, and chaos with order, dancing animals, classical mythology, and legend are all part of the conceptual framework of the individual pieces. This Disney production was an ambitious attempt to popularize classical music, particularly through the use of animation. The film was supposed to be limited to just the sorcerer's apprentice, but it was expanded to include the entire anthology of shorts. Other segments such as Ride of the Wild Cries, Swan of Tuanella, and Flight of the Bumblebee were storyboarded but never fully animated, and were thus never produced for future Fantasia Sly releases. This classic Disney film used to have a scene with a centaur named Sunflower, who acts as a servant for the other characters in the pastoral symphony section. Sunflower, unlike the other half-human half horse centaurs, has a donkey's body where the horses should be. She's giddy and sloppy and she was once seen polishing her wide satire counterpart's hooves. In late 1960s Disney versions of the film, the scene was removed. Given Disney's track record, the fact that it was featured at all shouldn't come as a surprise. That's why we say these movies were among our least the most racist movies of all time. So what do you think guys? Do you think these movies were racist at all? Just comment down below whatever you think and we are here to discuss it with you. Just don't forget, like, comment and share. Until the next video guys! 
Trixie Channel.